minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Coolest Reptile Network in the world. Welcome to Trap Talk Reptile Network. New breed on the block series every Monday night right here. I'm your boy MJ. What is good? Hope everyone's having a great start to thy week. If this is your first time hanging out, do me a favor. Hit that like button, especially if you are a fan of the new breeder on the block segment. If you thought this segment has been one of your most favorite segments so far, uh, watching Trap Talk, then hit that like button. And then go ahead. And hit that subscribe button, especially if you are into learning about reptiles and the reptile keepers, the breeders, the right moves to make within the reptile industry. Dude, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and then select all. You'll be reminded of every single podcast, every single segment dropped here on Trap Talk Reptile Network. Thank you for all the love and support. Don't forget, if you listen to Trap Talk Reptile Network on all the audio platforms, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Thank you no matter where you listen to this network i appreciate it so much early birds is going nuts i'll get you guys in a minute first and foremost support us arc we need to support us arc especially you need to support us arc if you aren't already because it's all about getting these numbers up when it comes to battling these legislations that could possibly hit your backyard you never know shout out to you support us arc and us arc florida shout out to phil goss shout out to anyone out there who's on the us arc side thank you so much for being on the same team as me i do want to say tonight's episode is brought to you by mana clothing company head over to manah clothing company company.com really awesome gear for training or just overall wear man i i rock manah clothing either shorts or t-shirt every single day that's a fact all right ask my wife either way use trap fam code excuse me use, use promo code trap fam to get 15 percent off your entire order again manah clothing company.com link in the description below tonight's episode is also brought to you by mark bailey reptiles og triple og my favorite our favorite well, I don't know. Emilio has Emilio is a huge Ralph Davis guy, so I would say like that's his. But either way, I this is my guy right here. And when it comes to kind of getting your hands on some of the best ball python productions in the ball python game, this is your guy right here. Remember this name, Mark Bailey Reptiles. Head over to Morph Market, type in Mark Bailey Reptiles, hit that follow button, and just be ready to see a lot of the heat coming from this guy. And cannot wait to hang out with Mark soon. Also, tonight's episode is brought to you by my man Gary Shavino over at GS Reptiles, one of my favorite diverse reptile keepers in the game, hands down. I love all his YouTube content. If you've not checked out GS Reptiles on YouTube yet, please go do. Especially if you're just in a in a in a like I don't know if you're if you're in a position where you're like, damn, I have so much chores to do, like in the in the reptile room, and I would wish I would to listen to some stuff. Type in GS Reptiles, hit that subscribe button, and go watch and veg of all his stuff. He's the man. Appreciate you, Gary Shavino. All right, Gary Shabino, GS Reptiles. Uh, thank you so much. Also, follow him on Instagram, too. Very important. Uh, shout out to Stephen Ashley over at Focus Cube Habitat. Number one PVC enclosures in the game. Flex in Texas all day, every day. Head over to FocusCubeHabitats.com. Check out the 30-plus design enclosures that they have going on. Also, follow them on Instagram as well. Um, shout out to Stephen. Shout out to Ashley. Um, and then also, tonight's episode is brought to you by Rare Genetic Inc. RGI in the game. What's up? Please, if you got those... Skin sheds, turn them in with the best. That's RGI, um, the leading, cutting edge when it comes to technology and finding out what your pos het really is. Uh, thank you so much, Ben and Sean over at RGI. Big uh, RGI collaboration uh, coming here soon, so be ready. And uh, yeah, last but not least, shout out to the dude, and that's the chipper dude. All right, check out CocoDude.com. Type in TrapFam24 and get 24% off the entire year. Number one cocoa substrate in the game. And my animals will tell you that personally and you want to know someone else will tell you that tonight's guest man well it's not really a guest it's tonight's co-host of mine but we're getting to some details tonight all right we've had so many new breed on the block guests so far um emilio said he went back nine months for him you know i know i've started new breed on the block before emilio started becoming a co-host here but still um so much influential i feel like new breed on the block segment our guest that we've had so far 
And I want to kind of tap into what I feel like is inspirational. Emilio's going to give us his part as well. So we're going to go a little bit back and forth and also talk about some more current events happening in the ball python game for sure. Um, I do want to say hi to all the early birds. I see early birds here in the building right now. So I do want to say hello to everyone in the building. And if you're in the live chats tonight, and if you think tonight's episode is worth of any super chats, uh, if you have a question or anything, anything that you feel like can relate to what we're talking about, drop a super chat. Do not be shy, and I'll drop it on the big screen. Let's go. Big Mike, 1776 Exotics, Trap Talk Patreon member, the OG, all day, every day. Appreciate you. Uh, Norify Exotics, Krista in the building. What's up, homegirl? Trap Talk Patreon member, V Unit family, all day, every day. Heath and Hatchery in the building. What is good, Heath and Hatchery? Trap Talk Patreon member, all day, every day. V Unit family. Uh, the homie City Limit Exotics, V Unit family. Trap Talk Patreon member, all day, every day. Big things coming with me and this guy, too. Be ready. Just about to be popping. Just remember I said that. Colorfully vulgar. What's good? Appreciate it. I had to read that name carefully just to make sure I didn't butcher it. Big Tony, my guy. Remember this name for sure. Might be brought up later. I don't know, but I'm just saying. The homie Tony B. My guy right here. What's good? Tony, next level morphs. Please go give him a follow on Instagram. Trap Talk page. I remember all day every day. It's my boy. Eric Smore Factory in the building. Viewing and family all day every day. UK's finest. PM Geckos in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. Celtic Reptiles in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. J&S Exotics. James Perry. What is good, player? Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. JQ. The homie Big JQ in the building. B Unit family all day every day. Willie B Exotics in the building. What is up, Willie B? Appreciate you. Matty Yates. What's good, Matt Yates? Good to see you, player. Thanks for tapping in. Appreciate you. Banana Fields in the building. What's up, Banana? I called her Banana again. <laughs> Damn, I'm going to call you Banana. That's not a bad name, though. I just think it's cool. Anyways, Banna Fields in the building. What's up, Banna? Uh, Piyush Patel. That's my dog right here. Piyush in the building. Appreciate you so much. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Reptafari in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. The, my girl Donnie Holman in the building. What's up, Donnie? Thanks for tapping in. This is Tony's mom, by the way. She's a sweet. She's awesome. One of the nicest ladies I've ever met at a reptile show. Uh, Clover's Reptiles. My dog right here. Tapping in. It's my boy. Alver Alvaro. Clover's Reptiles. Another amazing collaboration coming very soon. This Friday, actually. Be ready. Hit that subscribe button. You'll see exactly what I mean. Might even talk about it tonight. We'll see. Uh, Trap Talk Patreon member, V-Unit family, all day, every day. My guy, Shane Silva. It's my boy. Also, you know, Shane's the guy behind Mana, just so you know. All right? So, Mana cloth Clothing Company, meet Shane. Oh, wait, hold on. You guys don't know about this. This is Shane. Shane Silva. It's my boy. Trap Talk Patreon member of Unit Family all day, every day. And we're going to end things with Shane because he's probably the most player Hawaiian in the chats right now. And he's straight up Johnny Tsunami. So let's go. It is that time to get to business because there's so much to speak on New Breed on the Block. You guys know I've been bringing heat with this New Breed on the Block segment. Or shall I say we? That's right. Me and my dog, Emilio Villarino. So why don't we tap in and see what's been some of the most influential some of the best, some of the most iconic, historical new breed on the block guests that we've had so far here on Trap Talk. Let's go. Hey, listen, do what you got to do to get your mind right. Do what you got to do to stay hydrated because it's episode 471 with my dog, Big E, Top G, Villarino, Reptiles. Let's go. good you ready for do, do more in the future trap yes. talk podcasts yes man only, only trap talk exclusive yes. exclusive <laughs> oh so stop calling us <laughs> <laughs> from the spot get the club to pop when i come up with the crop god love it love it and not i'm hot from the hop to the club to spot get the club to pop when i come up with the club to spot get the club to pop when i come up with the club to spot get the club to pop when i come up Get the club to pop when I come up Everybody, we do it Everybody, we do it
Take it easy, man. Take it easy on the people tonight, man. What's <laughs> hey, I, hey, I got something to say real quick before we start. Let's go. Even the fucking haters dance during that intro. Oh, yeah. You want to know why? <laughs> because because their kids love it. I guarantee they, they don't have a choice, bro. It's, it's a catchy, <laughs> amazing song. You know what I mean? So I got to say, I got to tell all of y'all, while I'm backstage getting ready to go on, I'm fucking like... <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. Uh, What's good, man? How are you? Chilling. You know, listen, I want to first and foremost say shout out to anyone who's ever been a part of this Monday night episode that uh, me and Amila that have, you know, that we've been running strong here. Uh, There's so many people to bring still too, right? Like there's, I mean, you got a list going on. Um, You and I have been going back and forth, but I I thought we could hit the pause button just for one week, right? Because there's a lot for us to kind of like debrief on. Um, because we've had a, a lot of amazing guests. I can't say they've all been perfect. Unfortunately, I, I, I don't want to lie to you guys and say that every Monday night new breed on the block has been like, fuck yeah. No, there's there's been a little bit of cup, some some blemishes, I should say. But it's all good. This is the whole point of it, right? But um, I want to know just what feedback you've gotten so far. Before we get into the meat potatoes of what we're going to talk about tonight, overall, you've been a part of this segment for how many months now? Uh, well, about eight months. About eight, eight months. months. Yeah. Overall, what's your feedback been from you know not only just viewers and people you might see at shows, but your own people, the V Unit family? Like, what has you feel like this Monday night segment's done for up and coming breeders in the hobby? Well, I mean, they love it first and foremost. Um, they uh, they really appreciate the platform, uh, getting out there, showing everything they got, what what they got coming, you know, their vision. Um, I could tell you myself when I first got on here, man, I was, I was honored and that's what I get from everybody. You know, they want to come on new breed on the block, you know, they want to come on with us and, you know, they know we're going to be fair and honest with them and, you know, positive and build them up. Yeah. You know, and the biggest thing is, it's like, you don't really know who is who out there until you kind of have a moment to talk to them, sit down with them. And you and I both have had people on we thought were somebody that they're not. Either like Zane. Shout out to the the young homie Zane. Fucking young little kid in a sense, right? Which we never knew that. Or, I mean, not me, but you never knew that, right? He carried himself a lot older. Yeah. Um, Yeah, he he, he, – I got to know him better finally because, you know, he was – you know, anyone behind the keyboard, you you really don't know who you're talking to, right? No, um, and, and he strategically does, like you said, like he was like, dude, I'm not trying to get too personal and let people know because it does change how people look at you. Like they automatically will judge you because you're young. And if you're acting something that not young and they see that you're young, they're going to be like, oh, this, this is a kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of a smart thing to do. You know what I mean? I would say. Yeah. Now, I would say about, you know, I, I don't want to say <laughs> – because here's the thing, we're gonna talk about a lot tonight as far as this this segment, but your segment really was the first ideal like idea in my head that holy shit, like there's people out there who seem like they just started doing this around COVID, but it goes a lot deeper than that, right? Because I didn't expect to kind of have the kind of well, first and foremost, I think situational wise, what was happening in my life, you know, you kind of stood up for me and and a lot of that was like kind of the that was kind of the beginning stages of after we met, there were some things happening to me, people talking shit. You were kind of coming, like like standing up for me, you know what I mean? And then to get to know you better, better, I brought you on the show. And that's when I was like, whoa, what? And then you're telling me how, you know, you got roots from like way pre-social media, you know what I'm saying? Um, but that was like, dude, there's, you know, because I'm not going to lie, man. Sometimes I struggled always bringing on Ball Python, New Breeder on the blocks. You know, I'm like, dude, what about like, a uh, 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 green tree guy, which I used to bring green trees on. I mean, but at the end of the day, like no one is really coming in here other than ball Python people who really want to make this a business. You know what I'm saying? Um, otherwise, if you come in here and try to act like you're going to get into green tree Python to make a business out of it, they're going to laugh at you. Like it's not something that people do with green trees because it's hard to do, but they do do it with ball pythons. So it is what it is with the most for me personally, the most interesting things that I want to know is how someone plans on turning their reptile 
hobby into a business and what their plans are and, and what projects they, and, and so forth. Right. And so, and everyone has a different story. That's another thing I really like about Monday nights, but just to kind of give you your flowers, bro, it was your episode was for me was the biggest eye opener of like, dude, there's some fucking gems out there. Um, and I think I gave you the belt. I think I created the champ that I created a Monday night new breed on the block champion belt that night. And it gave it to you. And I don't think anyone took it from you ever since. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I went back, I went back and I, I went all the way back and, uh, I gotta give flowers to uh, blue line. Um, me and blue line had the highest impact, you know, when it comes to views and likes on new breeder on the block, the whole series. And uh, also Hissy Fit had a very good episode as well. So, so and you know what? You know, me there, I knew about tonight with you, you were going to go dig numbers up. Like, I knew you were going to, because you're a statistics, statistics guy. I love, so, I love numbers. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a feelings guy. Like, I looked up none of that shit. I don't, because, you know, me and views, I don't like the views. Even though well, they, they do reflect something, like, you can't ignore what they do, right? But for me, I, it's not, it's about feeling. You know what I mean? I also, I also gauge the likes right well so that that matters right um but i want to hear from you like right like you, do you remember maybe a new breathe on blocks uh episode you heard even before you became a co-host like one that maybe stood out to you um i know it's kind of a far back to think about but if you could just remember before you started doing these with me was there anyone out there, even maybe someone from your own area, like anyone, anyone, anyone that you saw that I brought on that you that you enjoyed? Off the top of the dome, no. Yeah, gotta be honest. I was watching a lot of Thursday nights and stuff like that. So you didn't give a shit about the new breeders, is what you're saying? Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, honestly, um, I was mainly watching your podcast on on on. Um, you know, drives far away. Um, sometimes when I'm cleaning, that, but uh, I mean, other than that, that's it. That you're the only podcast I ever watched while I was coming up. You know, or you know, earlier. So, earlier. so since your memory is basically, you know, not really solid before you became a co-host. Now that you are co-host, right? What what have been some of the ones that stood out to you the most? Maybe in the beginning, like before all, before we get to the overall effect, right? Like. Do you remember some of the first ones that really kind of stuck to you? Uh, the first, oh, you know, um, Alvaro's is on my list. I, I mean, I have a top five written down. Um, yeah, but I don't want to get to the top five yet. I want to. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about maybe some of the ones that stood out for you. That the first ones, right? Because I kind of want to take your jog your memory just a little bit as far as like the ones that kind of excited you to come back for the next week, right? You know. Well. Um, automatically I was really excited. Well, uh, you know, my first one, obviously, uh, Juan was, was good. Which um, one's Juan? Is that, was that, um, um, Windy City? Windy City, right. Yeah. Shout out to Um, Juan. I'd say Tony. Tony was, was awesome, man. Uh, Next Level Morse, uh, pretty much made a friend with him. Yeah. Guys, guys awesome one of those really good guys you you want to see do well you know and will do well but when it comes to seeing him do well what do you see like what is it that you like could really respect tony for when it comes to like him himself well first he's got amazing animals right but aside from that that's not the number one thing what i see in him is um a passion that you know, I, I see like a, a, a kid in a candy store. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's what I saw from Tony. Yeah, I always talk about how this ball pythons, I think, or just in any reptile makes you feel like a kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, ball it doesn't have to be ball pythons. It could be any reptile, any animal, any, um, you know, they, if it brings you there, man, it's not going anywhere. You know, I mean, that's, I, that's for for life. Yeah, breeding wise, I do enjoy ball pythons the most because that's the most I'm successful at. So it's fun, and like Christmas, like you know, they always say it's like Christmas morning when you open up a clutch, right? And it's so true. It's like it's fun. It's like because you know it's very unpredictable, and I always feel like I always hit something that I'm 
like I, I'm not expecting to hit, and it's crazy. You know, that's why I love ball pythons, and 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 it will live. It, that's well, another reason why I love ball pythons. Um, but you know, you got to find what it is that makes you want to do this to begin with. But I got to tell you, the ones who are doing it do it because they love feeling young, because it makes you feel young. Let's let's be honest. That's kind of what the whole gist is, and the thing is about ball pythons. It just makes you feel like a fucking kid. Aside from some of us making money, right? Right. Um, we always. Aside from our personal lives and, you know, whatever we do, our families, you know, um, we have something to look forward to every single year and something to build towards every single year. Um, th there's nothing like this, you know? Mm. So now before we kind of get moving and moving forward with this, you know, what is it that from what you can see? most new breeders are struggling with like what what do you think a common struggle is within the average of all new breeders that you uh maybe not even on the show but maybe ones that you deal and talk with personally you know what i'm saying what, what do you think the average struggle is well a lot of people are they have a fear of being left behind to you know or being behind which which, um, cause, which causes them to rush yes um that's the fucking psh, dude yeah i'm I'm so glad you said i'd that. say some of them are comparing themselves unfairly to people they should not um and it makes them i i think skip skip uh skip steps and uh it might even cause them to fail overall so what i would say is just slow down i know we say this all the time but slow down and i'm gonna take a, a quote from mark mandic that you know he was on here on thursday night uh two weeks ago grow grow into business not go into business that that phrase that he said that night it really hit with me and it stayed with me you know now okay let's think of that saying though right you grow into business now what are signs that are telling you to grow and turning into a business? Are we talking about income? Like, are we talking about making something back at some point? Then it's time to turn into a business? Or at what point does somebody, because you think about it, there could be somebody out there who's been in, been around for like two, three years now. They don't have a logo. They have a pretty awesome collection. They might even be breeding this year, right? But is it time? Like, when is it? Well, what I would say is what I like and what I recommend is uh, finish every level, right, of what you're building. What's level one? Level one is, uh, you know, you start producing holdbacks. Um, you start, you know, byproduct. You start getting some reviews on your morph market with those. Um, you start building a, a customer base that more than likely he's going to come back to you. Amelia, what um, do you have to say to anyone out there who thinks reviews aren't important? Oh, that's ridiculous. Tell me more. Hey, I, 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 I am of the belief that unless you are known, you've been known for a very long time across the industry, right? And you have your Patreon, you have your, you know, you have your people. Um, you need reviews for someone to spend a thousand dollars with you. You need to have reviews, let alone ten thousand. <clears throat> so I'm of I am of the belief that I, I, I mean, ask yourself, MJ. I, I, ask me if I'm going to spend big money with someone. I need to see at least twenty reviews. Yeah, but see I mean. Okay, but I mean that's for the average person buying off Morph Market, right? Well, yeah, uh, and and yourself included, you wouldn't yeah. buy from anyone under that has less than twenty reviews. So what I'm telling people out there is, you need to build this stuff. Yeah, it, it's, it's and you have, and it starts right away. Like as yes. far as like you yes. don't you don't make twenty thirty sales and then start doing reviews. Like your review needs to start like yeah, off open first. your Morph Market immediately, get your logo, brand yourself. Yeah. Um, it's not enough to go hey, out hey, there and pause pause on branding bro can we talk about it what about what 
I said pause on branding because I want to talk about branding. Okay. Logos. Okay. How do people slow down on logos? And what I mean by that, there's more terrible logos than there are good logos in the hobby right now. Okay. But I think it's important. I think it's easy to like, okay, you have you start with the terrible logo, which I think that's the common thing. Everyone starts with the logo that's kind of ugly, right? Or or it just doesn't make any sense. And then they evolve, right? But I also feel like why not wait until you kind of sit back and just find the logo that fits you best, right? Or am I wrong? Do you rush into a logo? You well, here's here's what I tell people and what I've told my friends, right? Um, come up with five or six different logos and uh you know ask your your friends ask uh people that you trust in the industry hey well, which which one of these do you think is more impactful um you know start with a process i, I feel like people do that and they're just getting lied to you like i do i i because there's like a lot of communities out there and group chat people and i don't want to say they all have the same logo but i feel like they all maybe like that maybe they maybe they all like that like that's why it's like are you asking someone who's who has market not marketing experience, but at least understands business and like, okay, like when it comes to remembering something, am I going to remember a dinosaur on a fucking sticker? That's a hologram. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so. Well, first you, it has to, it has to stick out and it has to, in my view, it has to represent you. Right. Um, a lot of the stuff same. you see now is, is the same, which is unfortunate. Um, but again, it, this is all up to who's doing it, right? So, again, I would say come up with five or six mock-ups and go to people that you know are not yes-men. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there are a lot of yes-men out there. Yeah, there is. If, 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 hey, we are not. <laughs> we are not. Hey, listen, <laughs> him, and I, him and I are not. We're brutally not. honest. We're brutally honest. And, it's, it's... And, and you know what? If someone, if someone gets mad at me, now, I'm, I'm I, I rather them get mad at me now than mad at me later if if they fail and they're like, why didn't you tell me this? Yeah, and I think eventually they will understand that I meant to help them three hundred percent. I think they'll figure it out. So I have to be honest. Yeah, the way I look at it, it's, I mean, it's kind of like you could get away with it, like just like you don't need to buy a freedom breeder rack. Right. Like you could go to Home Depot and get a rack, but you're just going to know the difference. Like if you're going to invest in a twenty five fifty dollar logo versus going to a graphic design artist and someone who will create like animation animation for you and all sorts of cool stuff. Like you got to understand you're going to it's going to be noticeable. You know what I'm saying? Um, but like, you know, I didn't start with anything crazy. Um, I, I grew into something where I was like, OK, now I want a brand. Um, but I also feel like I'm a crafty, neat idea kind of person and even my original logo wasn't an animal it was just a design outline of my face with the snake in it and i thought that was pretty cool but ideal for business maybe not so that's why i switched it right so i think definitely like i get it if you want your name out there with a logo right away and you're like i don't want to spend more than 50 bucks then go be a part of the millions out there who are fucking doing that i guess you know but yeah a, an example for me is i started with the blue eye lucy logo I love those colors. I love my little, it's a snake, it's, right? Just, it was just a snake. Yeah, it's simple, but I love it, right? Oh, God, and it's been sure. very successful for me. Um, now, I've kind of I have like a dual logo thing going, where I have the the you know the the silver and black. So I have a dual logo. There's nothing wrong with that with that either. But you have to stick to the one that you're known for the most, and then maybe and you know, I, hey, I believe in two logos. Why not? Right. Um, but I will stick to the main one and that'll be my backup for my exacting, you know, part of part of the business. You know what I mean? So when did merch become important to you, Emilio? At what point? Um the last couple of years, I mean, I started off sending shirts out to all my customers um two years ago. And um now me and my buddy, my buddy does my merch for me. I've come up with all these different, you know, merch options, which I love for myself. And, you know, people are digging it. So I, I think it's important. 
You know, it, it, there's nothing better than someone wanting to wear your merch, bro, and represent uh, you and your brand. And that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, like that's the idea, right? You would think your logo should be something you'd want on a shirt someday. Okay. Yeah. But then people are going to wear that. Like, don't, like, don't be a shirt that somebody buys out of pity and just puts it in a fucking drawer and they never wear it once because it's probably one of the ugliest shirts they have. And guess what? I have, I put a trash bag full of those one time. I just, and I hate to say it, but man, there was a time where I first started this podcast and I was like, bring me your throat, send me your shirt and I'll shout it out. Like, I'll, you know, and everyone was, this was like right out, like right around COVID, a year after COVID. And I got so many shirts, man. Um, and like, I got like, you know, I got a lot, like more than I would ever wear, but fuck, dude, there were so many, like, I'm not going to wear this. Like, what the fuck? Like, I almost felt bad showing it on the goddamn computer. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, it's all part of the growth, I think. What are you going to do? Yep. Now, getting back to some of the things that we are going to be getting into tonight. Your list of top five that you have, right? What are the categories you're basing this top five off of, first and foremost? Like, what, what categories does Emilio Villarino have in his head? When it comes to like notating certain episodes, uh, taking notes on certain things they say, let's let's get to like the category department inside your head, bro. I want to dig into what you're looking for. Well, for me, overall impact, how we vibed on the episode, knowledge, the knowledge the get the guest had. Um, <laughs> I gotta say, it, the level of misrepresentation is very important to me. <laughs> <laughs> like that you don't want to score high on that is what you're saying no <laughs> honesty is the best policy because you can't lie about a lot of this shit bro numbers don't lie people do all right <sighs> yeah facts um and then some of them were you know their family and uh you know they, they were amazing too and and uh it, it's like having your brother on the pot on the pod and, and it was it was so much fun um but yeah the first two were the for me the most impactful yeah now Overall. now I, I okay you know the miss re, re, miss re, 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 can you say that again i'm sorry I don't misrepresentation know, like, yeah sorry because i can't stop laughing um <laughs> <laughs> What are examples of that? Like just some of the things not adding up, you would say, or like, um, like, can you like, can we give me an example? Of what is something you've heard or even like kind of like something that you could pick out to kind of give people an example? In Cuban slang, we have this, this, this term. We say, uh, me voy a comer el mundo. I'm going to eat the world. And you haven't eaten a piece of pie yet. Uh, I, I think did you get it overall with what I said right there? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. So you're talking about you, you might try to bite more than you can chew basically. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're fucking like, you're going to take over the world and you haven't made a single sale yet. I mean, you haven't had your 10th review. Um, you know what I always say, just be realistic, be honest. And, and, and your passion is going to take you to where you want to be. Not just BSing everybody. And that's why I feel like it's important bringing certain people on, maybe even too soon, because some of this shit might get to their head. You know, um, I even think, and it's cool to be a part of communities, right? But some even communities will even gas other people up, not intentionally, but make people feel like, oh, like I got shit down more than the person average my time being in this is, like, or whatever the case is, right? But there are just certain individuals you could tell out there who are rushing it, um, just based off faking information they act like they know when they fucking don't and i I've, yeah. I've seen it on the show you know what i'm saying like stuff that just does does not add up whatsoever um but that's why i there's a saying out there i think kevin hart was the, the comedian was the first person i ever heard the saying from but everybody wants to be somebody but nobody wants to put the work in right and what i mean by that like i'm not saying that everyone who wants to rush and be somebody in the game doesn't have a good work ethic but they're definitely trying to take some shortcuts to try to get a name that they don't deserve you know what i'm saying or or never earned to begin with in the reptile community if you know what i'm saying like if you ain't got a clutch under your belt you should fucking relax a little bit you know what i'm saying there there's something that everyone out there needs to understand 
the animals that these guys are buying, they have to raise them. Got to wait. But not only that, you need to raise the offspring from those animals. This is a long, long game. Back. The misrepresentation, it catches up to you, bro. Mm -hmm. Just do your thing. Be passionate, honest, and humble. Yeah. Because everyone knows. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean... I mean, the thing is, like, you have an idea, but you know when they come on a show like this. You know yeah. what I mean? Because... Like you don't you don't you don't set yourself up for questions you don't have the fucking answers to, you know, first and foremost. Because you yeah, know um, um our boy D just just said in the in the in the in the chat, shut up and breed. Yeah, at the end shut of the day, shut up and breed, show us your yeah, vision, man. Show, show us something. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, bro. There's so many people who want a voice, but haven't done shit. Like, bro, have a fucking like. Don't you need, from what I remember coming up in life, you need cred. Like, you need some sort of fucking, like, clout where you've done something before you could fucking speak on it. And if not, you got to prove it, first and foremost. The thing that stands out to me is, like, saying you're really good at football, right? Because at football, and I remember everyone was tough until the day of the fucking, until practice, right? And you get on the field. That's how you really kind of determine where someone's really at. So, like I'm saying, there's a lot of people out there who talk a fucking big game, but you put them on the field, they don't know what to do. I have an analogy on your analogy. Yeah. That once that person gets on the field, they, you know, let's say the ball gets thrown at them. <laughs> Bro, they get hit so hard. Yeah. You know, they don't catch the ball and they don't get up off that floor if you're yeah. not honest. So, again, we're not beating nobody up. No, not at all. We're promoting. We're promoting. Steady, honest, realistic growth. That's right. it. Because growth in this industry comes with time. Like that's yes. that's and even even okay. Let's think about someone who had quick success. Probably some of the quickest success, more than anyone I could think of, and who already carried himself up to the top tier. Miguel, right? So Miguel was somebody who was, dude. People knew how fast he was moving, and they hated it. So he got shitted on. But even to this day, bro, no no disrespect to Miguel because he's killing it. He still gets hated on, bro. Like, people are still mad that he is in the position he is in with only being in the game for less than 10 years. It's only been seven years or – yeah, seven years he's only been in the game, right? But if you look at his productions, you'd be like, holy shit, was he in the early 2000s? No. Um, but just saying, like, you got to understand that even someone who comes in and moves quickly and has success with it – like it doesn't mean that's what that's like the game plan to do. Like, I, I don't want to say Miguel got lucky. He just did it right. I want to say he did it right and stuck it stuck with the right people as far as information goes. His projects, he had a vision, and that's why he has success because he had his own vision, right? But say what you want, bro. Like you know, it, you can't hate on someone who said who had success no matter how long they've been into something. But it isn't something that everyone should be chasing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, fully. Especially right now, too, because I think the biggest piece of Miguel's success was the timing of everything for him because he had productions and he had shit already in 2020. And if you had, if anyone was selling anything during COVID, you fucking, you maxed out. You did really well. I know this for a fact, personally, because I know I did. I know you did. Did, did you have stuff for sell in 2020 as well? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Just Stuff would sell in two minutes. Killed it, right? I'm, I I remember I didn't have a morph market till 2022. That's when I actually started using my morph market. Um, but anyways, mine mine's been up for like five years. Yeah. What your morph market? Yeah, that was a mistake. See, getting back to what we were talking about, I wish I would have opened the morph market account the minute morph market opened, which was 2012. At, right? uh, I think it was. Uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong. 15. I think it was 15. You're right. Yeah, I'm not sure. Someone in the chat, could, uh, you know, Dale's in the chat. Maybe he knows. Shut up to Dale. Hey, 2015, but what were you using? Uh, King, King Snakes or uh, uh, Craigslist? Facebook, Facebook, IG, um, you know, a lot of wholesale. In 2015, there was fate. There was, there was, there well, was. Well, I mean, you know, oh, I you, go, I heard you go around the shit, you know. 
dude i can't remember oh my god i'm just my instagram has been around since 2012 huh 2012 I, I, my instagram my instagram account is about 11 to 12 years old wow yeah. that's crazy yeah yeah i'll never forget the christmas it was christmas 2013 is when i opened up my instagram account or winner 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 yeah yeah so i just shared with you guys a mistake hmm. that was a mistake <laughs> so one one thing to do right off the bat on on a year you know you're gonna have production is start a morph market is what you're saying. No, oh, yeah, yeah, immediately. And 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 again, don't be afraid to post uh, an animal that you deem as undesirable, because every animal has there's every animal could sell out there. Yeah, uh, a, a lot of my friends are surprised when they sell. Um, a pastel yellow belly or something on morph market bro that's still a beautiful animal it's it, it, when it comes to selective breeding and um you know where we are today yeah for a breeder that animal is undesirable but guess what the pet market is going to take that animal and then there you get your first review yeah so that's a common mis misconception out there that people are afraid to to post you know, lower end animals, that's how you start building a customer base, you know? So let me read this question real quick. This angry bear question. Are y'all saying if you don't breed or have never bred, <laughs> you said bread, you can't have an opinion on the subject. Well, it depends what the subject is. So if we're talking about breeding, how the hell can you even talk about it if you've never done it? So uh, yeah, I'm not and saying I, that. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I, I think you might have misunderstood what we're saying. We're talking about new breeder on the blocks that come on here and they're building. They're they are off shooting or shooting their brand, their 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 vision, their their uh, their breeding company. So that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about a, a hobbyist that. It has an opinion. We're not, that's not what we're saying at all. Yeah. And I think also to be clear, if we are talking about a topic and a subject, you know, of course you could speak on it. Right. But we're saying, be careful how you speak on it. That's the biggest thing is like, don't make yourself portray yourself to be something that you're not because people listen to what you say. All right. And there's a lot of people out there, believe it or not, nameless collector who know what the fuck they're doing. So when they're sitting here looking at someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, it just doesn't make them look good. You know what I'm saying? But everyone could speak on whatever matter they want. But then again, unless you're asking questions, that's fine. But if you're trying to say what your take is on why you should let a clutch pip or why you should cut on day 52, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what's your experience? Like, what have you done? What I would say to, to the nameless collector, um, I'm going to take your opinion all day on what you think is the most beautiful animal out there or what you think will be a beautiful combo. Um, your opinion is very valuable, valuable to me and MJ. So that's not what we're saying at all. Right on. Well, I'm just saying, you know, any, anyone could speak on whatever they want if they're on the show and we're asking them because that's the whole point. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, too, right? Like, what are some ways of making sure information's correct? And what before we get to this next topic, dude, there's a lot of curveballs that are thrown at you in the ball python game. You know what I'm saying? Like, and stuff to where you could have sworn that a certain gene would be solid as fuck and you could invest in it, right? And then here we are, maybe a year or two goes down, and you hear something about that gene, and you're like, fuck, now what? You know what I'm saying? Um, where, where do people know when and when not to pivot on something that they're hearing information on, you know, like, what, like how, how do people know when to believe certain things out there and when not to believe it, Emilio? You need a big sample size of the same answers. Um, you, you should see it yourself, uh, to get, to give it validity. Um, and just keep asking around you know, to come up to an understanding. Uh, maybe it isn't true. Maybe it is true, but you got to figure out 
you know, you have to also have your hands on um, um, experience with it as well, in my opinion, right? Now, opinions could be something that could easily influence almost fucking any new keeper, right? Because sometimes new keepers just take it, take people for what their word, what their words are for it. Um, you definitely see, we've seen it in the chats for sure. Like certain people who hate certain genetics for whatever reason, like, oh man, this gene sucks. And then you come to find out they don't even keep that gene first and foremost, right? But what's a good way for someone to block out noise and find out the truth for themselves? When it comes to anti-DG people or anti-pastel people or anti-whatever genetic people, like, well, how, what? And, and 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 mind you, like, new being new. Yes, timing's everything, but there are ways of finding out information that is valid. You know what I'm saying? But what's a good way for a new person to do that? Well, a brand new person, um, I would say you need to select a Patreon. Um, uh, someone, a breeder that you, you trust, um, you know, a group of people that you trust that are going to tell you the truth. You At times you have to look at why people are giving you the information they give you. What is their end game? You know, why are they, or, or what is their interest in giving you the information that they're giving you? Or, you know, do they, does it feel honest? You know, that's what I like to ask myself. <laughs> I mean, let's be real, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I mean, or you got to just get into it and, and figure, you know, uh, do the work yourself and, and, you know, check out stats, check out Morph Market, check out how much there is of this certain gene or whatnot. Uh, like, when you said about pastel, I, I'm getting that. I, I'm the guy that's known for, me and Brock are known for the pastel hate. All I'm saying with pastel is that there's 35% of the market that has pastel in it. I don't hate pastel. I have pastel breed, uh, pairings this year. Okay? But I know where the market is, and I know that I can't have pastel on everything. That's all I continuously say. <laughs> I'm getting I mean, attacked. Gotta be an analytical, analytical about this shit. You know. I'm getting attacked by nicks and reptiles. <laughs> Do I go too hard on sunset though? Can we be honest about that? Like, I, I mean, I feel like I have good points on where I'm saying adult sunsets are like what they are, but I admitted that they're great foundation snakes. Like, I don't. I don't understand why I, I'm so wrong. I, I don't I don't think you've done anything wrong. You've brought up a conversation that should be had. Um, I mean, clearly, conversation is good. You know, uh, I mean, like the conversation me and Brock brought up with Pastel. You know, it was easy to beat up on Spider, right? That no one gives no one gave a shit about beating up on Spider. But, I mean. So are you saying sunset's gonna have a wobble? <laughs> no, 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 no. It it it, it does not. <laughs> Damn you! Want... <laughs> Shit, bro. Come on now. I'm just kidding, guys. Wow, look at D, D out there. He's really throwing heat, man. Thank you so much. I was not D, that was not me. That was uh, Dylan D Balls and Exotics. Um, no, I will say though, if I could say one of my favorite female episodes that i've had on new brand the block with you emilio would be krista for sure because krista shot to neurofy exotics who i get it i went gone too far um but she's passionate about sunset you know what i'm saying she has paintings that are crooked behind her on her wall um for every time she comes on trap talk so <laughs> she doesn't listen to any of the noise you know and maybe she does but she don't let it affect her passion on where she feels like certain projects are headed and that's one of the biggest vibes I got for her from Krista is her overall, like, like she's grounded and she's really into her projects. And I feel like you need to have to have that confidence going to anything when it comes to in not only investments, but timing. If you're going to be waiting so long on something, you better be fucking confident about it. Right. Yeah. Um, Cause what you, you can't bluff or fake production. Like it's going to come out like the heat that you're hoping to, 
make or portray that you're going to make, it's going to be proven sooner or later. You know what I'm saying? You know, real quick, my two favorite female episodes. Yes. Krista and Tommy. Uh, Neur Neurofy Exotics and uh, Inky Clouds. But getting back to what you said right now, there are snakes people are hitting that are massive investment snakes that are ugly as hell and they know it because <laughs> it has the wrong gene in it. Like what? Give me an example. No, no, I don't want to. <laughs> Come on, bro. You can't do that to the people. We're losing, we're losing viewers because you, okay. you don't want to say it. Thank you. All right, man. Uh, listen, you can't put pastel into monsoon stuff, bro. Sorry. No, everybody knows that. Come on. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can't make any white monsoons, any crystal monsoons. Um, I'm not the biggest sunset clown fan. You know, okay. keeping it real. I. You know? What's crazy? Sunset clown. I feel like isn't much off of just a regular sunset, but it's also another strong layer of concrete. I feel like it's, 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 I feel like it will be important at some point. Yeah. We, once you I will, layer I will see a combo. I will... jeans on it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, um, I have a good feeling about that. Yeah, for sure. I'm not hating on sunset clown. I just don't like it as a base, uh, double recessive. I'm, I can't, I'm on the, I'm on the fence on which one matters more period tri stripe or g stripe i i, I want to say a lot of the times it's tri stripe because i, I want to see that in exantic i know there's some crazy tri stripe exantic combos or projects out there g stripe is a part of kiki and i can't stand that shit i don't know why nixon, nixon reptiles hit a very nice exantic uh tri stripe uh Shout when it comes to tri stripe and g stripe for me I have to give the edge to tri stripe because it's so new. Yeah. Right. Come in comparison to genetic stripe, at least. Um, I'm I I work G stripe. Uh, it's all right, but uh, I gotta give the nod to tri stripe because it's newer and it's uh, less worked. There's there's more more to do with it, pretty much. Even though it has a lot of inconsistencies. Now another thing, right? I feel like we talk a lot about on this on this segment are the different names for each morph, right? You know, we talk trick, hurricane, uh, acid. What's the other one? Confusion. Acid. Confusion. Or... Yeah, and static. I still get confused. You know what I'm saying? Um, how do people know which one to go with? Like, like if you have someone out there who's doing a lot of homework and they're realizing. There are two names for something essentially the same. Is it just going off based on what you feel looks better, or is it what's more popular within the market? Um, honestly, when I bought my confusion, I would have bought either confusion or acid, keeping it one hundred percent with you. You know, one hundred, one hundred. You know, um, I feel like they're the same thing. I, I don't care. You know, mm. and when it comes to hurricane and trick. You know, we you like already know. Trick. You like trick more? No, not exactly. I, when I say tricked, I'm just, I'm just clowning, clowning that guy. You know what I mean? Um, hurricane animals tend to be brighter and you know a, a, a tad nicer. Not all of them, uh, but they're they're they've been proven to be the same thing. Right. You know. Bottom line. Little kind of talk about recent events with morphs and the names and stuff we talked about a little bit about that extreme gene right uh now there's a, a, a is it a super version of it and it's called extremist or, or what, what can you can, like refresh my memory what's going on with that again well i i watched the Netflix and um they were highlighting um you know the I, there's so many names that I don't know what to call it now. Okay, well, hold on. Before we get to what they, it, they what they named it on the Netflix or the nickname that Brittany Gobble gave it, the actual name of it comes from someone who worked this gene out of Florida. Yeah, Ken he, Masick. Ken Masick, right? Okay, yeah. he's, he's an OG. OG, right? Yeah. Shout out to Ken. And Ken isn't on the fence, or he's not on the he's not on the wagon of adding more names. He's like, make this shit simple, right? So the original gene is called Extreme, and Extreme. then, huh? 
Extreme Gene, from what I've heard, yes. Extreme Gene. And then and then the one that's the most recent one is Extremist or Extreme Extremist, right? Extremist, and then the, they tried to call it Mace now. Mace. You know, just, just to maybe kick off the project again. But I, I don't know. I, I, I again I, I'm not a it's it's all right for me. Uh I mean I, I don't got much to say about that. Um but I heard Ken originally was like, I don't want to change the name. Like, I don't yeah, I, I think it died there, pretty much. Yeah. It should. I mean, if that's what the person wants, that's what it should be. Because I'm definitely on the whole fucking like stop naming shit when it doesn't like. Why even give it another name? You know what I'm saying? Um, even though I love Brittany and she had all good intentions, but like, I don't know. I because I'm trying to think. Well, you know, extremists. What's the wrong? I don't know. I, I to me, I don't work it, so it is what it is. But yeah. I don't, oh man, this is another thing that just really aggravates me, Emilio, is when there's fucking four names for one morph, man. I wish we could just stop this. I really wish. I feel I, like I feel like they were trying to kick it off again because, again, there's genes that get buried. And look, and another thing. Shout out to Tommy, right? But this also pisses me off. When you think we're talking about just two genes, but then now, rumor has it, Arroyo is a part of all this now. You know what I'm saying? When does it end? When does it freaking end? It doesn't ever. It's wild. Okay, Dale. Dale brought something to light there in the chat. All right, check it out. Shout out to Dale. Constricted reptiles. Constricted reptiles. I've heard female visual tri stripes might not be the best at laying. I do not have any. Just heard a few people that the visual girls are reabsorbing. Not yeah, sure. Know. This is what I've heard. And Dale works with tri stripe. No. Oh wait, hold on. No, Dell was the same G stripe. Dell is, is this? No, Dell has G stripe. Yeah. Uh, so but this, that could, said, this could be a dirty move by Dell right now. <laughs> what I would say is we need, you know, again, that falls into we need a bigger sample size, right? It's a fairly new gene. There, there aren't. Uh, I mean, I, I'd say there aren't a lot of adult tri stripe, a ton of adult tri stripe girls out there. I mean, it could be many things causing. Uh, those issues or you know not going I, I mean i have a female that's never laid for me she, she's finally gonna lay this year uh she's six years old i mean I, and all her clutch mates have laid three or four clutches so i think um, you, i think what you said is so true emilio because you need numbers behind any kind of like claims like this because yeah. that's how you really fucking know you know what's up with people saying confusions are not solid snakes and lace what's up with that when there's really no documents or proofs behind saying that's really a weak gene when there's no numbers behind it, why would someone start saying that stuff? Well, I've heard a lot of chatter about confusions and acids being uh, not very good eaters the first couple of years. Does but it, again, go ahead. That's th these are people that might have one confusion in their collection. You know, if you had a, a bigger group, you you could make a better. Uh, you know, a better hypothesis about the, the gene itself, you know? Yeah, but I, I mean, it's just kind of shocking to think at this point there's rumors with confusion and lace when people have been investing in this for at least a few years now. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know if it's it, something that just starts to shock people and get them rocking and whatnot, but, you know... I was able to go to a source who probably has more lace or confusion than anyone who has adults and doesn't have any issues. And I would think if they had issues, it would say something. Right. But I feel like, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of, I don't want to say um, this is all strategically planned and, 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 and thought out before said, you know, but I just don't think a lot of people have the right numbers to speak on some of these rumors that are being spread. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. a little, just a little too soon. I think. Yeah. I mean, and they're fairly well. Lace isn't new, but lace. Someone in the the chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but lace. The lace gene came from one breeder, right? Mm -hmm. And then now we're starting to get a diverse impact on the animals and how we keep them, how we feed them, uh, breeding them into different uh, combos that is going to make us stronger. I think, right? Um, but the original source isn't. And again, no shots. I'm not going to say names, but I think the original source for these animals it just didn't feed very well either. I think that matters. Original source from what animal? 
the the lace animals. And you're saying genetically that affects them? Well, I mean, not exactly, but I think it has an impact. You know, how you feed your animals, the rhythm you get them in, I, I think that matters very much. What are, What's the genetic out there that's known to be a weak eater? I'm curious. I heard super banana. Oh, I've never heard that. Yeah? yeah Mark Mandic told me that. Okay, super banana. Um, people say super GHI. That's not true. My, mine's smash, so that's that's false. Well, super GHI. Yeah, mine. All mine eat great. Okay, they just don't don't grow as well. Then I don't have an issue. I have I don't have G, super GHI growth issues at all. Okay, okay. Well, I, I've I've heard confusion mainly, confusion and and a couple people I've heard say lace. So, yeah. No, what's what, what? What? How much confusion stuff do you have going on right now? Well, I have, I have two. I have a, a confusion leopard, uh, blackhead head dreamsicle female from Justin that's doing amazing. That's a female. Uh, that's I, a female. I'm sorry. It's yeah, a it's a female. female. And how big is she? She's 900 grams. How old? Uh, she's a 23. So she's not yeah, even she's, a year? She's doing great. She's a 2023. Wow. No, I'm sorry. She's a 2022. Oh. Yeah. Year, and a, year and a half. Yeah. Yeah, she's doing great. Um, I'm watching her. Um, and my male, he's a single gene confusion. I'm breeding him to some clown stuff, some clown combos. Uh, he's finally breeding, but he 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 gave me a scare at first. Can yeah. you give me tell me what? type of scare this was well he didn't eat for like uh, five months six months and he was pretty small so did you assist feed him at some point or you just he just turned around and started eating no nah, he turned it around but still he's very finicky so yeah what what got him eating a hopper no nah, he just does uh you know different i i tried different prey and he finally took a an x breeder mouse and just that's what he prefers that and asf's yeah, because, you know, one of the things that people really struggle with, too, is, like, they, you know, spend good money on a snake that gets to the point of they don't eat. You know what I'm saying? And then they're thinking, oh, my God, like, I'm doing something wrong. But, dude, sometimes snakes just turn off. Like, sometimes snakes, just, for whatever reason, um, e either the way they're being fed up to that point or something just happens where they just don't feel like they need to eat. Um, but, but, there's not much but, you can do about that. You know what I'm saying? But again, that could be random in, in the snake, the character of the snake. It's not only the the, the genetics, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I had a DG head clown that he ate like a beast, right? But I bred him to 15 girls and throughout his lifespan here, and he only gave me one clutch. He wouldn't touch any any female except one. I mean it, it just it's just depends, man. Yeah, it, it really does. And and I don't I don't really notice any difficulty when it comes to my male having like compatibility issues with my females with ball pythons with my chondros, bro. A hundred ten percent. Like I had my one male who just did work on my female BAC and now he just wanted nothing to do with no other girl. You know what I'm saying? So you just have some males who are just like one female only type of guys. <laughs> yeah, like, like us, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the, the, well, this guy killed me, man. I ended up selling him, at, selling him as a pet, but uh, yeah, I had to spend a ton of money because he he didn't he didn't uh, breed. Damn. But that said, uh, you know what I'll tell people out there is that you should have a backup male for everything. Yeah. So me not having a backup male for that project really hurt. So going into that, right? Like, how's how much money should someone dump? Like, and when I say by not the amount, but the percentage of the amount that they have, period, right? Because some people are ballsy and will go flat broke, you know what I'm saying? And then they'll wait till their paycheck, right? But is that even smart to do, right? Should someone go all in like that? Like, what's the percentage someone should really drop when it comes to either buying an investment, male or female or any kind of snake? Well, what I would say is don't go into debt. Yeah, dude, first and foremost... Yeah. Like, okay, um, breaking zero is better than going into debt. In, into debt, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, if you got some money to play with and um, to invest with, 
I mean, if 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 you learn this game correctly and you do it right, you do it for the long term, there's no way to lose, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a fact. I mean, you just spend what you can afford to spend. And uh, don't compare yourself to other people. Everyone, Dude. everyone has someone ahead of them. Everyone, in, in some facet of the game, right? Um, there's people in, in Canada, for instance. Um, I was looking at someone's page today, and I'm like blown away with where they are with uh, certain Black Exantic combos. Like they're probably the leader. Probably in the whole world right now, when it comes to black exantic combos, you know, without a doubt. So, yo, everyone has someone that's uh, ahead of them. So stop looking at that. Like, oh, yeah. you know, this guy's ahead of me, or that guy's ahead of me. Do your thing, man. Yeah, and don't it feel that pressure to to compare yourself to people that have been doing this for a long time that are that have paid their dues, that have, uh, you know, been sweating. And, you know, spending, you know, spending that time, that effort, that, that, you know, being consistent, uh, you got to do these things. Yeah. You want to know what reminds me a lot of ball pythons. That's obviously been picking up popularity a lot in the last couple of years, or I would say over the last year, a lot. And everyone's starting one is podcasting. Like motherfuckers think it's that easy to go ahead and start rolling shit out. And doing it consistently, you know what I'm That's saying? That's the next one. You know, someone in the chat, look, Paul, Paul just said in the chat, uh, don't chase the rabbit. It goes back to the same thing, bro. Like the rabbit and the and um the tortoise and the hare, right? Mm. Dog, don't be afraid to be the tortoise, man. Yeah, bro. The slow, slow growth. You know, don't be afraid of that. Mm -hmm. The hare, the hare gets so tired, might not make it to the finish line. And and guess what, man? That's what is typical in this in this industry. Um, I saw there's a there's a breeder that I have much respect for that is getting out. I mean, I mean, I, 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 no, no, no names. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. Is that the one you showed me not too long ago? Or yeah, but it, but there's so many that it's not even worth like bringing up a name, right? But like, it's something I text. I texted you. I said, "Damn, bro, like this guy's selling everything. Like I can never see myself without my animals. Like." I'll sell some if I have to one day, which is not going to happen. I'm going to work myself into the ground and ensure that never happens because this is what I love. This is my lifestyle. This is this is my life next to my family. Respect. But what I would say is you can never see me without ball pythons. You know, <laughs> once I'm gone, it's going to say ball python breeder extraordinaire. You know, like, you know, on easy ease, you know, plaque. They had the the gangster, whatever that that's, that's me, bro. I, I love this game. I love reptiles. I love snakes. I'm a snake guy. A hundred percent. Um, it's, I love it. So yeah, asking me if I love it is like asking if I like breathing, like, is this, this is like, yeah, this, this is yeah. my life, bro. And, like, and then you brought up the podcast. The podcast game is becoming saturated just like the ball reptile python. game or the ball Python game. Um, this takes a lot of work and effort and consistency. Um, I wish them well, yeah. you know? But also, like, it also goes back to, like, like you have an ugly logo when you start too quick. And, like, you know, so I feel like one thing about – one thing I do love about the podcasting scene, it's easy to see the ones who are rushing it and, like, aren't putting any effort. Like, and, and like, they're not investing anything into it. Basically going live in their living room type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like – you know, with fucking dirty laundry in their back and shit like that. And that's fine. That's cool. If you're going to do this for the fuck of it, that's cool. But stay the fuck out of the way, the ones who are doing it right. That's all I'm saying. That's, all I'm that's like throwing shit against the wall and hoping it sticks. Yeah. And what's right? crazy, like, oh, man. Oh, my God. One of the craziest. I, I want to tell you right now, if you listen to a reptile podcast out there and they're telling you, we're going to start talking about subjects that aren't reptile related. Like, we're going to start doing stuff that has nothing to do with reptiles. Guess what? They lost. <laughs> why would you want to do that? Like, why? Like, this is a fucking reptile podcast. This is all about reptiles to me. You know what I'm saying? It's because you're not getting what you want out of it. That that's the only reason why I could think. Why wouldn't you want to finish what you started talking about something that you started on? It's because there's no relevancy for you in it. 
if, you if, talk about if, something else. if you're not on a podcast to learn and get better, right? You're wasting yeah. your time. If you want to go to go watch Jerry Springer or Mari Povich, God bless you. Even though there's your entertainment, man. But guess what? You were just gonna laugh at that shit. And you're not learning anything. Yeah. At all. So it just what might. I would say. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What I would say is go to to a place and go to people that are going to nurture that information for you to for you to be with us down the road. Yeah, longevity, man. Together. You know, I tell my guys, my people, all I want from you is to represent well, stay in the game. I want you to last and I want you to bring more people in the game. Make our passion and our hobby bigger. I mean, that's what it's all about is increasing the amount of people who do this because it's not enough. It's grown. And I'm, I love the growth in the reptile game, but we need more of it. There's still more people out there who think we're weird versus the other way around. You know what I'm saying? So, but the only way we're going to do that is, is bringing people who want to be into this, man. Like there's literal, there's literally people out there who have either a podcast or some sort of a following who don't want to be doing this like they're just not they're either not happy doing it or they just really suck at it or they're just not in a good place period you know what i'm saying so that's why i also think you got to understand where are you at mentally when it comes to you wanting to listen to information you know like especially stuff that's reptile related that's why i always get confused you know like say what you want about other shows but this show's about reptiles it will always be about reptiles and the people within the reptile game like that's it like i have a good time on this show but it ain't a joke <laughs> you know what i'm saying so there's just levels to it that's all i mean yeah to to each his her or her own um if you want to learn all species if you want to you know have a good time as well but it be mainly about learning like your last episode will run like Bro, I've been in the game for 18 years, and to me, that's one of my favorite episodes I've ever seen on the track. Hey, bro, and that you're I agree on that, but that's crazy what Chris had just said. And you know what? And I know this she what she's talking about isn't related to what I've what I've heard over this other podcast that thinks they're fucking sick, but that's nuts. Uh Krista says, and when you invite a guest on a podcast, don't ghost them. Seems like common sense, but it isn't. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck invites somebody to a show and doesn't show up? Who does that? That is insane. That just shows like lack of just fucking interest of everything involved in that. And what I'm going to say is check this out because, you know, like, dude, you know, we got a lot going on, you and I, Emilio, this whole network, we're, we got a lot going on. But I can't help it if some of my homies out there who so whatever sends me screenshots of people taking shots of me in a story for whatever reason, right? And then next thing you know, like, you, you know, if you do, here's the thing. This is why, this is why I understand why some people like to talk shit about me because they, there are other people who like to back them up and say, yeah, like I'm, I'm with you on that. But guess what? It also works the other way around too. Sometimes the person talking shit has other people that they don't like who come and say, well, let me tell you something about that person. And I found out the most recent podcast that tried fucking having or throwing some shit on the trap eventually invited one of the biggest breeders in a certain demographic of reptiles out there to a show and they didn't show up for it. They left him hanging. They even gave him the link and everything. And he was just sitting there in the fucking background and they, they never showed up. I think you should fucking quit. If, if that's the case, that's that is just insane to me, bro. Yeah. That just shows no respect for what this fucking game is all about. And that's putting other people on and learning on how to make this shit a lifetime thing. That's fucking disgusting, bro. Trash, bro. I, 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 I'm having an MJ moment. I was going to make a point and my mind went blank. We're talking about Ron. Sorry. Uh, but, uh, but, but as far as I don't know before that, I'm sorry. But I, I I never mentioned that because I'm like, dude, that's a fucking piece of shit thing to do. But to hear that again, like, it's, this is a common thing. Fucking podcast hosts inviting guests to the show and not showing up. I wish they would put these people on blast. I really do. Yeah, what I would tell people out there, do you, you know, 
uh, you know, do your thing, man. Wish you luck. Uh, stop talking shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, stop trying to, you know, yeah. bring bring views to your platform by talking shit about someone else. This is the way I, 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 I just think that's weak as fuck. I do, and this is what I think about too, right? Because rest in, rest in peace, our boy, Brian Barczyk. I miss you, buddy. But, you know, one of the biggest things that always stood out to me is when I remember one of the third times I got, went to his... Uh, I remember. What? You know, I, I like to tell this to a lot of my people in private. A lot of the hate that people were pushing on you You've made some mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody's fucking perfect out there. Nobody. Nobody. Okay. So, but what I would say to that is that I think they just hate on, you know, they are hating on where they want to be and they can't be there. Yeah. I mean, that's facts. There's nothing around that. So stop yep. with the hate and build yourself. Yep. You know, don't hate on Emilio. Don't hate on MJ. Um, and I, I, I don't mean in the podcast game for me, but it's I, with I animals, bro. You're not even okay. I don't even stop you there, but not even with this podcast would I not have to deal with that. I deal with that because I get animals that people wish they had, and 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 either they 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 don't live where they can have it, they don't have the fucking the financial means to have it, whatever. But you could own an animal that puts somebody else in their feelings, and they don't like you for it. Yeah, and guess what? Um, I've done I've done that to a lot of people out there, aka the story of Bob Smith. I will fucking tell you the story of Bob Smith if I have to tell you how that even became about. They came about because of a lace monitor. That's how that fucking started. Okay. People get jealous because they got something that you have, or you you got something that they wish they had and they don't have it. And this is what it comes down to. What I would say, and, and again, I'm I'm gonna give you my my perspective. I do not have a hating bone in my body. Okay. I do not envy anyone. I'm trying to build the best life I can live for me. Or for first and foremost, my family and myself. If I constantly think about what someone else is doing and I'm angry and I'm watching them and, and, and yo, that's less energy I'm giving towards my situation, man. Yeah. And would what, you, what are you, I, I, what are you I, doing? I, I'm not trying to make this about me at all, but would you say overall in the last six years, I've had some success in the reptile industry? Obviously. I mean, there you go. Well, why, why and, even ask that? Question? How many times do you have to see how many people will say what success does to other people? It puts them in their fucking feelings, especially when they're old, wrinkly, fucking depressed. They don't want to go to work. They hate their wives. They're fucking fat, out of shape, whatever. Not my fucking problem. Don't be mad at me. But that's that's the natural human instinct. Just to, I'm gonna hate this person because they're they're successful or they they have something I wish I had. You know what I'm saying? You miserable fucks. Go figure it out. It's not my problem. It's not our problem. I'm gonna nicely say, put all that energy towards taking care of what you want to take care of in your life. Your life. Figure yep. your shit out, man. This life is for you to figure out. And a lot of these people are just, they don't have it, bro. They don't, they don't, they, they don't have the energy to fucking figure it out. They're miserable. Miserable people don't have energy. They don't want, they don't work out. They don't really do much out there. So. All right. We need to get back to New Breed on the block. Fuck all don't that not, shit. Don't, dude, don't stop me in my tracks, bro. Why would you do that? <laughs> not to make a point. You just fucking just blow me right off, bro. Like, come on. <laughs> No disrespect. I just don't think that that's important. You know? Mm -hmm. I think we gave it enough time. All right. Give us your top five then. No, give me yours first. I don't have a top five. What are you talking about? That, that, you, this is your thing as far as you telling us your top five. So tell us your top five. All right, man. I'm going to go from the bottom up. Okay? So honorable mentions. Z D C Zane Wagner, the young homie. All right, came out to the world 19 years old. All right, that was a, a really dope episode. That's your fifth one. That's top five. That's your that's number no, that's five. That's an honorable mention. 
Whoa, he didn't make <laughs> you got honorable mentions. Yes, crazy. Inky, Tommy, that was dope. I love that episode. Another honorable mention, and then top five. Here we go. Jeremy Bod, the Bods. Great, great people. Massive impact out there. A lot of different species. Uh, power couple in the state of Florida. That was a really good one. Anything you, you want to say about that one? Mm -mm. MJ? No? Okay. Um, number four, Tony. That was Next a good level one. Morphs. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, he became a good friend. And, uh, you know, he's got that passion. You know what I mean? And uh, he's going to be very successful. That's right. No, number three, my, you know, my VUNIFAM, fam, I'm going to, I'm going to put them together. Uh, you know, Clover Reptiles, Alvaro, JQ Pythons, Joaquin, El Cubano, JQ. I like Jay. Jay was good. Neurofy Exotics, Krista. Damn, number two? That's number three or two? No, no, no. That they're number three. My group is number oh. three. I had oh, to jump them all together. At number three. All right. And then we got Brock at Morphinary Arts, and uh, Dan Vision Quest. Dan was great. So uh, and then you know number two, we got Matt Yates. Nice. Yo, know, Matt. Matt uh, was was great. Very experienced. Uh, it was a great fluid conversation. If you haven't seen that episode, uh, you should watch it. Yeah, you'll learn some stuff. And then number one, Nixon Reptiles. Damn, that was your number one. That felt that felt like a Thursday night. Um, that was. It's heavy. A, an amazing episode. I enjoyed it big time. I enjoyed all these, but Nixon uh, Brandon was fucking awesome. I I was. I'm not. I'm shocked he's number one, but I'm also gonna say respect to that because I really enjoyed that episode, and he's one of those examples of like he shouldn't have been on the new breeder on the block, but also he was new into ball python, so that makes sense why he was. But Brandon's been around the game for a little bit, um, and he, and he does he, it right. He overall, does it right because like, he's not impeccable. cocky. He's fucking from what I've seen personally. Like he he carries himself well, like in the ball python game. Um, to where it was great and refreshing to hear about what he had going on and what he was doing, and I, you know, I gotta say that was probably one of my, one of my most favorite ones too, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, so that's my list. Um, you know, um, what do you have to say? You know, is there something that sticks out to you in your whole new breed on the block uh, experience? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've like, I've, there's been a lot of them that I liked. Um, the ones I like the most are the young ones, you know? Well, also, like, the ones that just kind of throw me by surprise, right? Like, I, I like D. Like, first and foremost, shout out to D from Bomb Projects. But D is someone I've been a fan of for a while, ever since I met her. And I know her coming on the show was a lot, like, as far as to do, because, you know, she's just not somebody to go on camera. Like, she doesn't – she's behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? And to kind of earn her kind of respect to where she's down to come on camera and share her personality and just show who she is, I thought that was fucking sick. And I had a good time talking with her, too, like – I like people I could just conversate with that like are about reptiles. Right. But also leads to what it is that they do to make them do reptiles. Like, like how do you even, how are you even in a position to even work with reptiles? That type of thing, you know? Um, so D was an awesome, one an awesome show. I really like Krista. Um, Krista was awesome because her, she's young, but she's like nowhere near like green as far as information stuff. Like she does her homework. She knows her stuff. She stands tall on her projects, which I love. Um, yeah, and I do. I really like Zane, bro. Zane was, dude. I, I I was really impressed with that kid. That was probably one of my most recent favorite ones. Was Zane? I'm not gonna lie. Um, Zane was great, and I thought Tommy was badass too because she like was not gonna budge about who influences her. She says, "I don't fucking have anyone who influences me. I don't give a fuck." <laughs> That, no, that, she said, no respect. She said, I don't respect nobody. <laughs> that was the best laugh. For sure. Like, that was so that was funny. Like, I, bro, that was classic. Classic moment. I had to share that one. Brandon's asking what he gets for winning. <laughs> Just kidding. Bragging rights. <laughs> you didn't ask that. Um, no, listen. I do. 
this was kind of like created over the last week as far as like why we wanted to do this episode. It wasn't something we really had scheduled for a while, but I will tell you this. Um, this is kind of like we did this in going into April at the end of the year. We're going to do this again. All right. And I think we're going to report card this shit. I think we should report card this. I think we should have categories. All right. And then I want to come up with the best new breeder on the block of the whole 2024 2023 season. I want to include last year as well. Okay. You know, and, and, then, and, and uh, you know, we're not talking, we're not bringing up the worst ones. Okay. No, we've already, that, I mean, I think we've already made that clear. No, no but I mean, there, there's a couple really bad ones, but what I would say <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> but come prepared, you know, everyone could be nervous, right? I nervous was nervous. Is good. Nervous is I good. was extremely nervous. Um, but come prepared, you know, uh, represent yourself well, represent us well, you know, do do your work on, on promoting, you know, your show. I mean, it's all about you. You know, at the end of the day, we're going to have a, a show, you know, the next week, right? Yeah. Do your legwork. Tell your friends, your family. Tell, oh, my God, I'm on, I'm, I'm going to be on New Breed on the Block. I'm so excited. You know, do the legwork. Promote, promote yourself. And I, 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 I just think like what a what a amazing bread uh bread bread crumb trail or whatever they uh uh piece of history for you to be a part of working with reptiles you know what I'm saying um because like there's no circus act as part of what we're doing here like this is this is about to stay in this shit and to do this for the rest of your life you know um two guys who do this full time you know what I'm saying yeah successfully yeah. successfully you know yeah. so yeah. Yeah. And, um, also, guys, this is not about the live. This is going to be here forever. Exactly. I mean, so, you know, do your homework and represent yourself well. Uh, be yourself. You know, amplify who you want people to see. Who who you want people to see. You know. Let me ask you a real question, Emilio. Should we or should we not ever bring someone on if they have not had their first clutch yet? You should. Why not? We've done that plenty of times. I don't, I don't, there's nothing wrong with that. Cool. Yeah. As long as we know that, you know, they're going to have an impact and they're going to be here long term and they're, they're passionate. They're, they're, they're like Tony, a little kid at a, a candy store, you know? So what's what's a way of seeing if someone's going to have an impact if they haven't had their first clutch yet and they've only been in the game for like a year? Um, their it's, level of commitment to learn. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. If if you're if you're a dude that made a logo, made your shirt, you know, without buying, you know, a book per se or joining a Patreon um to learn said species i mean uh, you're you're a pretender hey if you were to go back and do your first new breed on the block episode over again would you do it like this guy and do some dabs before the show <laughs> nah man i'm too worried about how people think of me and you know trying to word things correctly um <laughs> how i look hey. Why you why you act all the trappers in the V Unit fam like like the dab didn't fucking root, wreck your world? I you you keep saying oh I was fine I did great motherfucker come on. I, more than anything I got sleepy, <laughs> and I and I felt like like when I was outside, I had to go get fresh air. I right. had to stand up, and then I was. Uh, what I'd say to you guys is this: I was <laughs> swaying like the Empire State Building. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried. I was worried you're gonna get sick and not eat your food because we went to a little bomb, uh, a little restaurant there that you know, and you ate. We, everybody ate. I mean, I ate my food, but I'll tell you this: I don't remember that shit. <laughs> and I, I, I have a very good memory oh, because shit. I, I typically, you know, I'm typically, I typically don't do stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, once in a while is fine. Um, but yeah, I don't remember that meal. I don't remember what we talked about. I, I remember knocking the fuck out. I'll tell you that. 
that's the best feeling, man. You're because you pass out in the whip, remember? Um, yeah. And your your wife shot the list, but she's saying that you never pass out in the whip. And no, I do, but I wake up like when there's any slight like a movement, like a jerk or something. Any slight movement, I, I wake up like that. That that night, I didn't wake up shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, listen. I, I I don't know if you still do, but I have maybe one or two hot seat questions to throw. I out have here. three for you. Damn. It's gonna hurt. All right, who wants to go? Should we do rock, paper, scissors on who goes first? Nah, you could go first. All right. All right. So I'm going to do what you do normally, right? You give them the option. One has to go. All right? So one has to go for Amelia when it comes to this triple recessive project. All right? Hypo, DG, Clown, or... Exantic Pi DG. Oh, that's easy. Exantic Pi DG's got to go. That easy? Yeah. Wow. All right. What's your least favorite recessive in the uh, Ball Python game that's not albino? <laughs> you remember, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> got him! I knew he wasn't going to answer too quick. You can't. You got to be careful on this one. Zebra. Oh, wow, bro. Hey, I was just I was just thinking, I swear to God, last night in my sleep, I was like, bro, Zebra is fucking going down. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was like, it's not picking up. It's not going to fucking do nothing. Hey, look, much love to much love to those that work it and believe in it. It's just not that not enough for me. That's all. I'm one guy. That's it. I'm always gonna be honest with you guys. That was fucking epic. Damn, that was epic. It, but it, it was almost G stripe or tri stripe. But I went zebra. I went with the 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 impact. That was a super big impact for sure. Um, all right, what you got for me? All right, uh, this is gonna hurt. Oh boy. Let's go with the easy one first. All right, because it's it's been pretty popular in, in you know in the music world this week. One has to go. Or no, let's do this. Let's pick the best one out of all three. Kendrick, Drake, or J. Cole? That's what you're making me pick? Yeah, pick your best. J. Yeah. Cole, they're the best. J. Cole. Cole. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm... I'm Kendrick, Kendrick I, fucking... God, I can't stand Kendrick. I like, I like Kendrick. I, I'm but dude. J. Cole is the best lyricist of the three. I, I, I like not, Kendrick's different style. Oh you know? man, I, I liked Kendrick's maybe his uh the beginning stuff he had. No, not even the, I'm not no no can't even no, say it, I, I can't lie to you. Some of his shit I can't listen to because it's it's so off the wall, but when he hits it good, that's 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 who I like a lot. J. Cole's the best lyricist. I think the only Kendrick thing I liked was the first album. I think it was the van or something in the in the front yard or some shit. That's the one I liked. Like the bitch don't fuck my vibe, don't the vibe one, whatever. That, that was him, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, I love I love the that, that the album humble, was sick. The humble album is my favorite. Um, all right, this is this is where it starts to hurt. Okay, one's got to go. Lace monitors or tree monitors? Oh, what a dick! <laughs> oh, bro, wow! Oh my god! That's not the worst one, by the way. What's the next one? Fucking Capone or fucking Leo or what? What's Jesus, what's going on? I wouldn't go there. My heart hurts right now, dude. This is nuts. Oh, my God. I don't even know how to answer this. Because I'm going to be depressed either way. Oh, my God, dude. I'm going to have to say Mac Dre and Alice has to go, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. I'll say this. Easy. You pick, you pick what I would pick. I mean, just because, like, I love Mac Dre and Alice, but, like, the tree monitors are so many species and, like, and it would just, oh man, that sucks though. Why did you have to ask me that, man? That's fucked up. Hey, you know, now you feel, now you feel what the guests feel. That hurt right there. That one right there stopped. I didn't think anyone could really get me. That yeah, one. Yeah, I want you to come up with one more hot seat for me. That wasn't powerful enough. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one, this one's bad too, man. All right. Emeralds or chondros? Oh. Dude, it depends on the day, but I think I know what you're gonna answer. But 
I'm gonna say emeralds, bro. Gotta go. I have to say emeralds. No, 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 no. Condros have to go. I'm sorry. Oh wow, you surprised me. Yeah, I have to. I just I think I would regret that. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hey, hey, the mayor's gonna kill you. I'm a flop, bro. I'm a flop. I'm gonna say emeralds have to go. I, I can't be only because I'm thinking about like my what I'm raising up right now and all my fucking designer lines, and I'm like, wait a minute. No, like I can't. Like Condros have to stay, bro. Yeah, con Condros are like the tree monitors, right? Like, okay, one to one, I want the emerald. But if you're talking about overall the game, oh man, Condro for sure. It's nice. It's nice to to ask you questions, bro. <laughs> it's weird. It's like, damn, <laughs> it's crazy how I put people in that position and I'm, I expect them to answer quickly. And that right there was tough. That was tough. Yeah, Brian, Brian, uh, a couple of people, he got emeralds. Condros, emeralds. Uh, Mike, 1776, Condros for the win. All right, I got a fucking crazy hot seat question for you. Ready? Who, and I don't, because I know it would be me probably, so let's not. Let's take me out of the equation, right? But who's the number one V unit member in the V unit family? Who roll? Who's the who's who's ranked the highest in the? And like I said, I'm not in that game, but I'm saying, who's the highest in the V unit family? You would say, Ooh, that's a hot one. You told me to come hot, and I came hot. Woo! I can't wait to hear this one. Me? <laughs> come on, you don't count, bro. Like you need. Every captain has a co-captain, bro. Come on. Um, I have two generals in the V unit. Thank you. Um, all right, all right. But no, who's there's got to be one general on this one, okay? So think about those two in your head, and there has to be one. You can't. Yeah, Ryan and Freddy, more right. Freddy reptiles. Brock's gonna be pissed. <laughs> nah, Brock's my dog. Brock, Brock knows. Brock knows what's up. You don't. You don't go to war with one general. That's that is. Wait, what? You don't go to war with one general. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, you got like five or six. That's you know? true. Fuck, dude. Well, that was great. I mean, we, we hot seat question. Fucking war was great. <laughs> that, was, that was a good time. But no, man. I I, I always um, man. I don't want to say like it's it's rare where we're like, damn, that was a that was kind of a shitty Monday night. All our Monday nights are great. I want to say we we have such a good time bringing people on, getting to know them better. Cause I won't, like I said, 98.9% of the new breeders that we've had on this show are up and coming. Some already on their way. Some already there. Like some already just fucking dim. You know, I've been surprised. Like look at Zane motherfucker. And he's still doing other stuff. So this is great. And I will say uh -huh. Monday nights are never going anywhere. Monday nights are always here to stay. Like this is very, very awesome and very uh, inspiring. And, you know, everyone uh, that's done this show is an MBB alum. And what I would say is uh, what I've always said about my customers. Um, I've liked to, I, I came up with this phrase, forging friendships through this amazing hobby of ours. That's something that I take serious. And it's also now also part of the, the MBB podcast, you know, the, the Trap Reptile Network, um, you know. Building friendships, man. Long-lasting friendships. And you know what? The people are what make this reptile hobby so amazing. You know what I'm saying? The connections, the relationships, the, the opportunities, right? And uh, all we're trying to do is give opportunity to people out there. So cannot wait. Can't wait any, for the next one. Now, uh, you know, I, the, any questions from the, the audience? Before you know, we we wind this down. Any super chats specifically that you know you want us to talk about? That was that's Emilio's thing right there. I didn't, I don't normally do that, but go ahead. Who has questions? Just that that was just me off the dome. I guess we'll sit here and wait. Hey, all right, let's do this. Let's hey, real quick, five ten minutes, bro. I have to pick crickets up, so let's let's hurry up and. You know what I mean? <laughs> my, hey, my bad, my bad, MJ. No, you're good. No, no, you're good. What else? All what right. else? We're gonna pick the best hot seat question in the chat for each of us. <laughs> let's do that. That's gonna be some fun. What? <laughs> Wait. So what? We would pick pick the best hot seat, like out of all the questions that we just said. What's no. The best? 
Let's let the chat give us each a hot seat question. All right. Not everybody. The best one out of the group, out of the, the group, you know, for me and you. Shit. MJ's like, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> I'm just, I, this is, no one's typing. You know that, right? Okay. <laughs> well, then let's give them, let's give them a minute. So, um, <laughs> P. Diddy, huh? Fuck. Oh, God, no yeah. Diddy. No Diddy. No Diddy. <laughs> Should say the fan for him, though. I'm not going to lie. Nah, me and MJ will pick. That's it. It'll be fast. It's we don't have night. You know, bro. Like, on, go. Some of these things you don't really process, bro, and you don't realize what you're asking is kind of a huge task. And um, all right, we got Krista. Here we go. If you had to change one thing starting out in this game, what would it be? That's not... Is that what you mean by that? No, I what? asked her for a hot seat. That's a hot seat, I guess. Oh, you no, you're one of, talking about one of our hot seats. No, I, I want a hot seat style question. Oh boy. Okay. Tony. Okay. D- hey, D got you a good one. Shout out to Tony though. But but the, Tony gave us a super chat. So I'm gonna leave it here for a little bit. This motherfucker paid for this. So now we're just sitting here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> where's Tony? Okay, hold on. Um, where's oh wait, I mean, what'd you say? You said there's one, there's a good one. Where uh D D gave you a, a, a music one. Immortal technique for sure, 100 percent All day, every day. Thanks, Donnie. Appreciate you so much. All right, Jim. All right, Jimmy. Oh, oh look at this one. Top dog. No, hold on. No, hold on. Top dog in the industry, period. Whoa. Whoa. He's not I just saying he's not just saying ball pythons. He's saying period. Like oh. period. In the industry, period. Hmm. I know who I'm going with. I, I don't care about period. For me, it's Justin Caboco. Hmm. Period. Ready for mine? Yeah. Lori Barcheck, period. She ain't top. Ain't no one topping her right now in the game for sure. Legacy, legacy, Reptarium. She's the goat. She's the best. And right behind her, Mark Bailey. Uh, someone asked what animal I would get into if I had to start all over or whatnot. Um, that depends on uh what year it was, what was hot when it was hot, and whatnot. So, if I had to start all over again, I start with Xander. Cause I love it. What should I do with this? <laughs> Tell the truth. Yes, I would. Dump all day, every day. <laughs> all right, one more for MJ. Right, what about you, though? What, what about me? It says Kiki, pump or dump? Ah, uh, come on. Dump. <laughs> I, love you, Dale. I love you, JQ. All right. What what what, what are you gonna say, bro? I'm sorry. Now one more for MJ, since we got MJ on the hot seat. Oh, if you could only have one species, what would it be? A species you don't currently have. That's for you, right? Why don't you go? Why don't you say it too? Because you're there's a lot of species you don't have. So what's one that you'd possibly want that, that you don't have right now? And I'll think of one too. Um, Ooh, diamonds, pythons. Yes. I want a real deal, pure diamond python. I want that over bull and I for sure. Um, I, I can never have this, but this is something I would love to have. Um, I would like to have some cobras. What? That's like, my favorite real? snake. You'd be down to have venomous in your in is no, I can't and I won't. But that's my favorite snake. But you can get permits to keep that if you want. Yeah, to. but I just I wouldn't take the risk. Wow, damn. Yeah. All right, last one, last one. Same question, MJ. One more if you're starting off with. Hmm. Foundation more for me. If I were to start off, hypo. Hypo's king, dude. There's no better gene out there than hypo. I'm telling you right now, if you're not in the hypo game, you're doing yourself a disservice. Especially if you keep DG and you don't have hypo, you're doing yourself a disservice. DG can only make it so far without hypo. I'm telling you right now. 
All right. Because if you're competing with somebody out there who has DG hypo, you're getting smashed on. You're gonna get you're gonna get ripped apart. I'm telling you right now. So that's all I gotta say. Uh dude, that was cool. I wasn't really I, I mean I guess this is the way to do it sometimes. Like, fuck it. Let's let's ask to chat some hot seat questions. You know what I mean? That's cool. I thought that was great. That was fun. Yeah. Um, this was fun. We're going to do this again. Like I said, we're going to put a little bit more thought. I'm going to put some more energy and thought into the yearly wrap-up number one new breeder on the block at the end of the year. Might be some awards, too, I might give out. I don't know. I'm thinking, let's make it a whole event. Why not? Might even do a giveaway or something sick. Let's just make it really, really amazing at the end of the year. How about that? Yeah. And then, what you, and, and then we'll give the winner a Thursday night slot. You know what I mean? Well, we'll give we'll give the winner the best Monday night breeder that we have for the year and last year, we'll give them a Monday night slot. With with their, we'll do one even better, because more likely it's gonna be a ball python person, right? Yeah. And even if it's not, then we'll figure it out. But with their favorite breeder currently in the game, right? Like, let's just say someone wins and they're like, "Oh my god, I'm a huge fucking," uh, or "I'm a huge Justin fan," right? We we'll get Justin on the show or something like that. I don't know, something like right. Or if they're a huge Emilio fan, then Emilio's gonna be on the show. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That's that's badass, bro. We'll figure it out. Either way, I appreciate you. I pre hey, listen, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate everyone out there who shows up here on Monday nights and not only give us the opportunity to share some cool stuff with you, but you give the guests. You're giving the, the guests the time of day. And I think that's the most important thing we're trying to do is help others get put on into a beautiful world that could be a part of your life forever. Like us, we're, we're, we're in this for life. You feel me? So... What do you have to say to everyone out there, Emilio? All the love and support that we've been getting and the continue ongoing love and support that we have. Uh, it's been great, and we much appreciate it. And, uh, again, if you guys need anything, just hit us up. Um, you know, we'll, you know, we'll answer your questions and uh, steer, steer you the right way. And that's away from sunset. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Hey, guys, thank you so much. Please do me the favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Select all. You'll be reminded about every single Monday night, new breed on the block, and of course, all the other episodes that we have here. But Emilio, thank you so much. Villarina Reptiles on IG, B Unit Family, thank you. Patreon members, the Trappers, you guys are amazing. First link in the description below. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Have a good night. We'll see you here Tuesday. All the tree Tuesday going down tomorrow night. See you later, Emilio. Have a good night, bro.